Welcome back to the Classics Films channel and the first of our film reviews. I chose this film for a very important reason. It really is the most important film I ever saw. It was the first film that really illustrated to me the power of film. It was the first film that really struck me as being very, very real. Uh, it was the film that sent me on my ongoing odyssey of going back and, look and finding and, and watching great classic films. The film is Vittorio De Sica's Bicycle Thief from 1948. The two key writers on this film were Vittorio De Sica, the director, uh, and Cesare Zavattini, two men who worked together on all of De Sica's films. They've done well to adapt uh, what was a relatively popular novel into what became a really, really great film. Now, as I said, what was important about this film was its realism for me. And what De Sica did, which added to that, was that he chose to cast non-actors in the key roles, but also in a lot of the supporting roles as well. Lamberto Maggiorani, the man who ended up playing Antonio, uh, was actually a factory fitter. He'd come to the audition bringing his son along, um, but it wasn't his son that De Sica chose, it was uh, Lamberto. He chose him because he could see that he was very shy and embarrassed about being in front of the camera, and he felt that he could use this to affect. De Sica said of Maggiorani, the way he moved, the way he sat down, his gestures with his hands, hardened from work, the hands of a working man, not of an actor. I made him promise that after the film he would forget the cinema and would go back to his job. Now Maggiorani didn't do that, he went on to appear in uh, many other films after that, some of them De Sica's films, uh, but uh, I guess what was lost to the factory floor uh, is um, certainly some, someone who's added a great deal to cinema history and, and this particular instance provided a really wonderful performance. When filming began De Sica still hadn't found anyone to play Bruno, that was until he saw Enzo Staiola. De Sica recalled, I was telling Maggiorani something when I turned around in annoyance at the onlookers who were crowding around me. And saw an odd-looking child with a round face, a big funny nose, and wonderful lively eyes. Saint Gennaro had sent him to me, I thought. It was proof of the fact that everything was turning out right. The why of this film for me is its realism. Uh, and part of that was around the casting. Uh, the other part of that was around the way in which the film was actually made. Now, there's a more contemporary style of filmmaking called Gonzo or guerrilla filmmaking, where the filmmakers themselves don't tend to get permits. They tend to shoot a lot of the scenes and a lot of the footage on the run. And it works very well, especially in documentary films, and it gives a film a very real look. This is the approach that Vittorio De Sica took before it was an approach, approach that actually sort of, I guess, existed in the annals of film history. Now, although there was a, a haphazard aspect to the filmmaking, there was also a great deal of careful planning and rehearsing that went into a lot of these scenes as well. And that was important to give it a realistic look. Many of the extras were locals, and the crowd scenes in particular were meticulously staged and they were drilled. And that included a, one scene in particular where Vittorio De Sica had hired 40 street vendors to create uh, a particular atmosphere, and it worked incredibly well. The Roman fire department actually chipped in and created rainstorms for some of the important scenes in the film. So it certainly in many ways was a community film uh, and it's better for that. Now the other groundbreaking aspect of this film was something which again was an invention of De Sica. Uh, it was used subsequently by great filmmakers such as Akira Kurosawa. Uh, De Sica set up six different cameras in a lot of the scenes. What that does is it gives the actors, or in this case the non-actors, uh, no knowledge of where they're being shot from. So as a result they can't play to the camera, they don't tend to be drawn to the camera and they tend to react a lot more naturalistically as well. And this is something that works really well uh, in this particular film, as well as subsequent films, like I said, Cassara's high, high and Low, where he used the same technique. The other important thing about this film is that two years earlier, De Sica had made a film called Shoeshine. It was a controversial film, and as a result, uh, trying to attract funding and support from the studios for this film was essentially impossible. So what he had to do is he had to go out amongst his friends, acquaintances, and raise the money independently. Uh, and the important thing about that was that uh, in some ways it was probably a lower budget, which encouraged more creativity, but also it gave him a great deal of freedom. One of the other great things I love about this film is the closing sequence. The last five minutes or so of the film are really, really important from a storytelling perspective, but they're also incredibly powerful as well. I'm not going to go into too much detail. It's probably one of the key reasons why I think you should watch this film. It's probably one of the great closing sequences in cinema history. Film bodies and film magazines will often publish lists of 
the greatest films of all time. Certainly in the years following its release, it was considered the best film ever made. And in, as ye the years have gone by, it has slid down some of those particular lists. It's still very high. It's still considered very, very highly by many, many people. Uh, but I think one of the reasons why it isn't considered as highly is because perhaps people have forgotten about it. Uh, and that's another reason to go back and see this particular film. So hopefully I've convinced you to go and watch this film. See what you think, make up your own mind, uh, and certainly in the comment sections below, feel free to share with everyone uh, what you thought about this particular film. And we'll see you again soon for our next film review.